Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the second in the simple series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials. So today we're going to be looking at the Atari ST, and we're going to be doing some simple graphics. If you're not familiar with the simple series, what it is, is we have a single assembly file. It does a single task, and hopefully this is as simple as possible, so that if you're just getting started, there's a very small file you can look at and get the job done. And if you're trying to convert to a different assembler, I use Vasm, but if you want to use something else, that's great. But if, if you've got a single file that you need to worry about, and you, you, there's less to convert if you're having trouble with your own assembler. Today we're going to be drawing a simple bitmap onto the screen. First, an 8x8 tile bitmap. It's actually not a tile because this isn't a tile sprite system, but um, we're going to draw the 8x8 smiley, and then we're going to draw our 48x48 Chibiko mascot. And this should give an example of a very simple, small character for if you were trying to draw a font, and a much larger character for your game sprites. Just a very simple example to get you started with graphics on the Atari ST. Anyway, let's go over to today's example in the source code. So here it is, and let's just fire it up and check it really works. And if I just run this here, and then if I run my program.tos here, there's our smiley face. It's rather small, but it is there. And then if I just do my second version here, there's our Chibico character. So those are the two examples we're going to be seeing today. And generally speaking, they're very, very similar. Now, these examples are going to assume you know how to get the file assembled and run it in an emulator. If you don't, that's no problem. Please go and see my Hello World series, which is the sort of precursor to this. You can see this on your own, and the content I discuss in this will be self-contained, but I'm not going to discuss how to rebuild a file, how to set up an emulator, how, how to use a, an assembler, things like that, because I've already covered them in Hello World. So please watch that after you've seen this, if that's something you need to know about. Now, today's episode, okay, let's have a look then. So the first thing we're doing is we need to move into supervisor mode and we're having to do some commands to turn the operating system into supervisor mode here. And then when we get the execution running at ST start, the process is set up in the mode we need to do our work today. Now, we need to set up our screen mode. We're gonna set up a 320 by 200 four plane mode. This is a 16 color mode. Uh, we tend to aim for 256 by 192 or so. Uh, 320 by 200 is the most appropriate mode for my tutorials. So that's what we're using here. And we need to define some screen memory. And we've got this label screen mem here. Where is it? Well, it's all the way down here. Now you can see we're defining some bytes here with the DSB command. And this is going to be enough screen space for our screen memory. We've also got a pointer here, which we will use in some cases. And we've got this user RAM, which isn't actually needed for this example. I probably should have deleted that. So we, what we're doing here, it's a little bit tricky, but basically we need to be aligned to a 256 byte boundary so that the bottom byte is 00 at the start of the screen memory. And the way we're doing that is we're adding 255 and then clearing the bottom byte. There's enough extra space in this screen memory to, to allow for that. And then we're storing the actual screen base in that memory address that we saw down here. So this is the pointer to the true start of the screen, which will be somewhere in this screen memory. We don't quite know where it'll be because the operating system will allocate it to us. Now you'll see this is in a section called BSS. This is a area of memory that will start as zero. It's undefined, so we can't define like, we can't define bitmap data in there because it won't work. It would it would get reset. So um, that's why our bitmap data is outside of that section there. This is our smiley bitmap here. We'll have a look at that in just a second though. So that's uh, defining the screen memory. And then what we're doing is we are just reformatting the address into the correct format for the register that defines the screen memory to the graphics hardware. Right, now at this point, our screen is gonna be set up and what we wanna do is define some colors. So the colors we're using here is color zero black, purple, cyan and white. Now each color is defined by a register you can see here FF8240 onwards here, it's a two bytes per register, and it's three bits of a nibble for each color in red, green, blue format. So from zero to seven here. So you can see we've got zero, all zeros for the black color here, and all sevens for the white color here. Okay, now what's the format of the screen? Well, it's a bit tricky and it's in bit planes. Now, a bit plane is basically, if you think of a 16 color image, it's going to use four bits because a number from zero to 15 needs four bits basically. Now, 
if it, you could store these as nibbles, but a lot of graphics hardware actually stores them as bit planes. This is where you take all of the bit zeros from eight consecutive pixels and you store them in a single byte. Then you take all of the bit ones, all the bit twos and all the bit threes to make up your four bit per pixel image. And that's what the Atari ST does. It does it slightly differently to other systems though, because rather than storing a, a byte, of eight consecutive pixels. It actually stores in words 16 consecutive pixels, but we're gonna convert around that because we want to draw an eight by eight tile here. Now, this is effectively our smiley. So this is defining the bit zeros of the, of the eight pixels. This is the bit ones, and this is the bit twos and the bit threes. Now our smiley is just four color, so bit two and bit three are always zero. The face of the smiley is in color one. So you can see here, this is a solid filled eight pixel wide part, and these are the curves at the top and the bottom, which is why you see the numbers going down. The eyes are in color three, and the mouth is in color two, which is why you can see some of the bit zeros are not one there. Now, if you don't understand bit planes, uh, don't worry about it too much. You can actually export files in the right format with my AccuSprite editor. We'll see that this Chibico character for the second example was output via this function just here in the Atari ST save raw bitmap. And so if you don't understand the bit planes, you don't particularly need to understand it at this stage, but um, the best thing to do is have a play, change some of these values and see what happens and maybe you'll become a bit clearer with it. Okay, now when we want to calculate a memory address that we want to draw to, we want to convert an XY position to an address in memory for that pixel in on the screen. And so what we're doing here is we're taking an X and Y position here and then we are calculating the screen position accordingly. Now, because the screen works in words, but this function works in a, a horizontal byte position, we're actually taking off the bottom bit here, and then we are actually putting it back in later on. So what we're doing here is we're adding the byte offset here because each pair of bytes is in a separate word. We're actually stripping off the bottom bit here and adding that part back later on. We're then rotating the remaining bits left by two because there are four bit planes and they're actually consecutive in memory along a line. On some systems like the Amiga, they're separate banks, but that's not the way the Atari works. It, it sort of has a word for 16 consecutive pixels, bit plane zero, a word for bit plane one, bit plane two, bit plane three. So that's why we're kind of splitting things out here. But um, our formula is effectively the, the screen base, the start of the screen in memory, plus the Y line times 160, plus all of the bits except the bottom bit times four, uh, plus the, 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 the absolute bottom bit. A bit, bit strange, but it does work. It does, it does work okay. So this is the formula for calculating our screen position. So the, the long and the short of it, I know that's a bit tricky, but the long and the short of it was we just load uh, X position into D1 in bytes, uh, Y line in D2, call get screen pause, and then A6 will return the screen address for the byte that we wanted to, to write to. We load our bitmap in here, and then we're going to load the height in. Now we need to load the four bytes relating to the eight pixel wide image into the four bit planes. And as I say, each bit plane is two apart in memory. So all we need to do is we read in the first byte, bit plane zero, and we write it to memory address A6. Then we load in the next byte, we're auto incrementing here, and we load that into A6 offset by two, so bit plane one, then offset by four, bit plane two, and then offset by six, bit plane three. Now A6 has never changed here. Now we don't actually need that line, I don't think. I think that's a mistake to take that out. Yeah, there's a superfluous command there, it's not very good. Um, so we didn't actually need that command there. And then to move down the line, we just add 160, which will move us down one Y line. And then we're ready to do the same for the next line. So we just repeat this eight times to draw our smiley. Now that's how we do the simple version, very straightforward, relatively speaking. The advanced version, we've got that Chibico character. Now we're including that here from a file. And that file was created with AccuSprite Editor. And then we've got this slightly more complicated loop to draw the character. You can see the core of it is basically the same here, but we've got some extra code here and we're having to do um, some rather tricky stuff to see if we're on odd or even bytes because every other byte, remember we need to move along by eight because of those word bit planes along the screen memory. So it's a bit tricky, but that's what we have to do here. So we're doing a single eight pixel block here for the four bit planes. We're moving along and we're e either 
moving forward by one byte or moving forward by eight bytes here. That's what that's doing. And we're just repeating along the line. Once we've done a line, we're restoring the X position here from the stack, which is backing it up there. And then we're moving down a line by adding 160 here, and that will move us down a line. And this effectively allows us to draw our sprite just fine, as you can see. Now, if we want, of course, if we've got a bigger sprite, we just need to change these here. So if we change this to 96, we're gonna get a mess because our sprite isn't 96 wide, but you can see it will work. And now what we've effectively done is we've split half the lines, so it's become half the height, and we'd, we'd be drawing some blank area here. But as I say, the, the point I'm making is that this code um, is actually usable as a template for sprites as long as they are done in eight pixel wide blocks, which is what I do in my tutorials. And I say it, it was used, um, the simpler version here was based on the Grime 68000 example I did before, and that was worked very well. So hopefully this will work well for you as well if you're looking to create a simple game and you just wanna get started with some simple graphics routines. So there we go. Anyway, that's what I've got to show you today. Hope you found this interesting. If you have, please like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff because it really helps with the Google Analytics and it brings my tutorials to the top of the search results, helps people find them. I've got a forum on my website if you want to uh, chat about programming assembly or just general chatting about retro. Please uh, go in along and join that because I do little competitions for beginner programming and things as well. But anyway, whatever you do, I hope you'll enjoy programming the Atari ST and assembly in general. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.